Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder, and I'm going to help you rock your hormones and feel great in your body so that you can reclaim more energy, vitality, and joy and become the CEO of your health. Let's jump on in. Do you have a habit or ritual that makes a huge positive difference in your day-to-day life? The type of habit that you will not give up for anyone. Maybe it's coffee first thing in the morning or a smoothie for breakfast, or maybe it's your sacred sleep routine or working out after work. Whatever that habit or ritual is, I want you to think about the numerous benefits it has brought to your life and to your health. Now, I can currently think of more than one for myself because I am a creature of habits that I love. And some of these habits have been a part of my non-negotiable list for over a decade, while others I have added in the past two years, mainly because my life and my body have experienced so many different needs these past two to three years, from prepping my body to get pregnant, to actual pregnancy, to the many layers of postpartum and breastfeeding. I can finally say that I feel like I'm on the other side. And my body has changed so much in these past three years from age 40 to 43. And due to these changes, I have swapped habits in and out based on my body's needs. So I want you to know that habits can come and go. And it's really about aligning with what feels right to you and what feels great for your body in the moment. Now, one thing is true. There are habits and rituals that I do almost every single day because the juice is worth the squeeze day in and day out. And today, I'm going to be sharing five simple health rules and or habits, however you want to call them, that when done consistently can make a big impact on your health, specifically your metabolic health and your energy levels. Because as I've shared many, many times on this show, energy is the ultimate currency when it comes to our health, and it's one of the best indicators of how your body is functioning. Now, because energy is a byproduct of your mitochondria, which is literally metabolic function on a cellular level for every single cell in your body. And the more mitochondria you have that are optimally functioning, the better off you are for living your best high energy life. Now, another thing I want to say about these five rules is that they're pretty general and honestly, pretty easy. So take what you need or want from these rules and adapt them to fit your life so that they fully serve you. Now, there's a lot of research backing these rules up, but again, they need to work for you. They need to feel like a non-negotiable for you day in and day out. Now, before I dive into the five simple rules today, I got to just share a quick, amazing resource that I've created just for you. My Hormone Release Summit is going live in just one week, and we already have over 50,000 women registered, and I really, really want you to be one of them. Now, if you're not registered yet, go and get your free ticket like right now by going to releasesummit.com slash podcast. Now, if you are struggling with brain fog or low energy or metabolic issues or PMS symptoms, and you have a gut feeling that your hormones are connected in some way and you've been looking for a sustainable solution to really address these issues head on, this free event was literally created for you. Plus, you're going to get some sexy bonuses for attending, and there's going to be giveaway prizes, and honestly, there's so much good stuff. I just don't want you to miss out. And if you are thinking of somebody who needs to hear this incredible information, a bestie, a cousin, a colleague, let them know. Spread the love of this event and get your besties signed up too. Again, you're going to go to reliefsummit.com slash podcast to register now and get your free ticket. All right, so now that you got your free ticket, let's kick off the list with rule number one. And just note that these are in no particular order at all. So rule number one, swap other drinks for water and tea and coffee. But let's just say water and tea. (laughs) For starters, most of us are dehydrated. I believe that the number is over 68% of adults in the U.S. are not drinking enough water to stay properly hydrated for our cells to function well. And one of the biggest ways we mess up our blood sugar and our metabolism is with added sugar and sugar substitutes in our drinks. Things like Powerade, sweetened iced tea at Starbucks, diet sodas, and even slightly sweetened sparkling waters. Right now, everywhere I look, there are countless drinks with five grams of sugar, let me tell you, even five grams of liquid sugar can drive a blood sugar spike because often there is nothing opposing them, right? Often we're drinking these drinks on their own. Sugar hits the bloodstream. It is going to spike your blood sugar. 
Now, one of the ways that I actually navigate this is I have a 22 ounce and a 30 ounce Yeti, and I take them with me everywhere I go. I always have an iced tea and a Pellegrino in the fridge. I have glass Pellegrinos that I get from Costco, and then I make my own iced tea with an iced tea maker. And I just take my own sparkly iced tea on the go. Now, my favorite combination is hibiscus iced tea with plain Pellegrino. It's like out of the glass. I squeeze a half a lime and I add a couple of mint leaves and I'm off to the races. So I just want you to get into the habit of like, what is your favorite drink to take with you anywhere? Is it water with lemon? Is it a sparkling water with some berries in it? Is it an iced tea? Maybe it's just a straight Americano, whatever it is. Like just bring your drinks with you everywhere. The reason why I bring my own drink with me is that there's never a restaurant that makes a really yummy iced tea. It's always like the standard black iced tea. And I want something that I really love. And so I just bring my Yeti with me. No one says anything about nothing. And I just go about my day and it works really, really well. And I really started this when I was pregnant because, again, I wanted to have something fun, something sparkly that was just more than a sparkling water. And so I started making my own concoction at home. And voila, I have continued it for practically three years now. And it keeps me on the straight and narrow. I rarely ever, ever drink anything with a sweetener in it. I just make my drink to go. And sometimes I pack two of them depending on how long we're going to be out. And it just makes things so much easier. So just something to consider if you're looking for a way to stay hydrated and to drink something fun without extra added calories and extra sugar. Rule number two, cut out snacking between meals, especially after dinner. Yes, I'm talking about those late night snacks. This one is big. Simply cutting out snacks between meals makes a massive difference for your blood sugar, digestion, brain health, your cells because they're not working so hard, and most importantly, your mitochondria. So the one thing about your mitochondria that you gotta know is they don't want to be constantly in a metabolic state. They wanna relax, they wanna rest, they wanna clean up shop. And if you're eating all the time, you know, five to six times a day, your mitochondria are constantly working and they burn out and eventually, they they die. So you want to just be mindful. Our mitochondria do well with hormesis. And hormesis, again, hormetic types of habits and lifestyle is where we kind of stress the system. So if we can go meal to meal without snacks, it is phenomenal for your mitochondria. Now, the trick here is to eat really nutrient-dense meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with enough protein to keep you full. So that is the rule here. And my recommendation is you know, try to keep snack foods out of the house or snack foods out of the workspace and make sure that lunch and dinner are super robust. If you find yourself doing late night snacking, make sure that that dinner is going to tide you over till the next day. Especially late night eating will mess up your sleep. It'll mess up all kinds of things. And we are more insulin resistant at night. So it will completely throw off your blood sugar as well. So just something to be thinking about. If you know you're a late night snacker, swap it out for sparkling water, or maybe it's a tea or, you know, come up with something else. Maybe it's journaling, maybe it's a good TV show. I don't really know, but just kind of think about what kind of swap can you do to swap out the late night eating for something that is low or no calorie. That's the goal. All right. Rule number three, This is kind of in relation to the late night eating piece, but it's stop eating after 7 p.m. or three to four hours before your bedtime. So you want to just give yourself between that last meal, like literally the last bite that you have for dinner, and when you head to bed, you want a three to four hour timeline. You want a gap. And this is so critical because it absolutely impacts your digestion It impacts your sleep, especially your deep sleep and your REM sleep, and it helps you to wake up in a more thermogenic state. So most days of the week for us, we have dinner before 6 p.m. I try to have 6 p.m. be our cutoff time, which gives me four hours between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m., which is when I usually head to bed. So just be thinking about that, like how do you reverse engineer if you go to bed at 10 or 11, maybe seven o'clock is that cutoff time for you. So just something to think about. Also, something else to be mindful of is alcohol after a certain time. If you're going to have alcohol with dinner, again, try to aim for the earlier part of the evening because the later we have alcohol, the more impactful, the more it's going to impact our sleep. So just something to think about. But yeah, that rule 
I know we hear it all the time. Stop eating before 7 p.m. There's a reason for it. It has a lot to do with our insulin resistance, our blood sugar, and getting deep restful sleep, which I think all of us really want on a consistent basis. All right, rule number four, walk throughout the day, especially after dinner. So gosh, I cannot tell you how many incredible benefits there are to walking. It's low impact. It's great for your mental well-being. It is great for your metabolic well-being. It's great for your blood sugar. I mean, mm, there's just so many wins for walking, especially out in nature. So again, get in where you fit in. Do it in the morning, throughout the day. But ideally, I'd love for you to walk right after dinner or your big meals because it will help your digestion, it'll help your energy levels, and it'll help your blood sugar because your muscles will take in that excess glucose from that meal, which is a game changer. So if there was one habit that I'd even have you consider from this list of five, it is walking throughout the day. One of my, I told you earlier, one of my gifts for my birthday is I got myself a Fitbit because I was using my phone, but I just don't have my phone on me that often. So finally I got a Fitbit and I have been consistently, ever since I got the Fitbit, I have been clocking a minimum of 10,000 steps every single day. The last couple days I hit 20,000. So I'm feeling good. I love it. It feels good to be walking outside. And I especially aim to walk it at least after one big meal, if not both. So again, getting where you fit in, but I hope that walking has been a part of your daily habit. Again, the juice is totally worth the squeeze here and it requires so little effort. Just step outside of the house, even walk around the house makes a huge difference. All right. Last rule, rule number five, weight train 20 to 30 minutes throughout the week. Now, I've been working out since I was 18 years old, and there have only been a handful of times in my life where I haven't worked out three to six times a week. But now that I'm in my 40s, I realize how critical it is for me to build and maintain muscle mass, not only for my metabolic health, but for my brain and my overall energy. Now, I don't weight train every single day, but I move my body every single day outside because I'm walking every single day. I try to weight train four to five times a week, about 20 to 30 minutes each session, and I try to use the heaviest weights I can. I try to go for it. I work upper body, lower body, all the things. And my goal is that I'm really building that muscle mass and maintaining that tone because I know that every year I get older, the more challenging it's going to be to maintain it. And I want to just feel my very best for as long as possible. Other things that I love to do, yoga, bike riding. I'm on my Peloton. I love to do core all the time. I think movement is amazing. So again, getting when you fit in when it comes to movement, whether it's walking or it's yoga or it's dancing. But I also want to really impart that weight training two to three times a week, if not more, can make a massive difference in your overall longevity. So there you have it. These are the five rules. And what I love about these five rules is that they're pretty easy. Now, It doesn't mean that they are easy to integrate every single day consistently, but for the most part, they are free. They can be done throughout the day. And some of them just require a little bit of tweaks and changes to your daily life to kind of adjust them. Like maybe you're having dinner before 7.30 and maybe you're able to move that down to seven o'clock or 7.15, right? There's a lot of little micro shifts that we can make to make some of these habits become real for us. And like all habits, the more consistent we are with them, the easier they become and the more automatic they become for us. Some of these rules have been habits of mine for years, again, even decades, and some I've just added over the course of the past two years, like walking after dinner and eating earlier in the evening. Now, I really loved these habits and I started adopting these habits when I wore a continuous glucose monitor and I noticed how crazy my blood sugar was when I ate later. I had been a late eater for years and years and had no idea that it was having such a big impact on me. And I realized that the earlier that I ate, along with a walk after dinner, made a massive impact on my health, my blood sugar, my sleep, and in turn, I had more energy throughout the day and evening. Like I felt it. It made a huge difference for me. And they weren't major changes and tweaks. It was just, you know, adding a little bit of a walk after dinner and making dinner slightly earlier. And we just kept making it earlier and earlier and earlier till we almost have dinner every day of the week before 6 p.m. Again, you got to figure out what works best for you and tailor it to your life and your lifestyle. Now, 
what I want you to do before we go is I want you to think of one of the rules that I mentioned today right now. Do you have one on your mind? And I want you to write down that particular rule and commit to it. Just give it a try for seven days. And whatever that rule is, tell someone in your life that you chat with daily so that you can check in and let them know how it's going. Um, I think accountability buddies are so, so critical when it comes to something we really want to commit to, something that's super important to us, but can be new and even feel a little bit challenging because it's new. Then the one I'm continuing to work on right now is eating before 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. at the latest. My husband, Alex, is fully on board, but sometimes we get back to the house later than we expect or one of us is working later than we originally planned, but we're getting better and better pretty much every single week. We are nailing it before 6.30 p.m., but ideally we're trying to get it done before 6 p.m. Again, it's a little bit of an adjustment because he and I used to always eat 7, 7.30, and it's definitely a new habit for us over this past year and a half, but we're getting better and better and better. And the one thing about eating early for dinner is not everyone in your life does so. Maybe your friends don't eat early. Maybe your family doesn't eat early. So again, it's figuring out that one habit that's going to really make a difference for you and just spend the next 7 to 10 days just chipping away and making it more consistent for you. So that's what I wanted to share today. If you do have one rule or habit in mind from today, I am cheering you on 100% because I know that it's these small shifts in our daily habits that make all the difference in the world. So I'm sending you so much love for boosting your vitality and your overall health. As always, thank you so much for listening in on the Essentially You podcast. The show is about providing tools to rock your hormones and feel amazing in your body. Now, if there's someone that needs to hear this episode today, maybe one of these five rules you want to do with them as well, take a screenshot, share it, text it to them, or share it on Instagram. If you do share it on Insta, hashtag hormone CEO. And until the next episode, have an amazing day.